If when you die, someone takes the VR headset off of your head and asks you how the virtual life was, what's the first thing you do say? 310 This game sucks. I'd go blind because wearing a VR headset for too long is bad for your eyes. It dragged at times. What the fuck? Worst game ever. 10 out of 10 graphics. NPCs were 50-50 at best and really need an update. Also could use a gameplay update because it gets boring at times. The first thing I would do is tell them how amazing the virtual life was. I would describe all of the different places I visited and the people I met. I would also tell them about all of the different things I learned while living in the virtual world. I'd say give me another go. Interesting. Thank fuck that's over. Fucking shit. Shitty. Absolute shit. Why did you let me play on hard mode? How long it took? I died a virgin. Fuck. Next time I go in how can I activate creative mode? Are granny panties? Unattractive why or why not? It's not the panties but the granny and the panties that I'm after. There are. Because of what they are. Are you asking for a friend? I'm into it lol. Maybe I'm weird though. When we get to CM we don't care. Depends on size and shape of ass. Depends. Unsexy when my wife wears them. Bonerific when my 85 year old grandmother wears them. I don't believe I care they are comfy. Smiley face. Depends. If they're stretchy enough, I can pull them over my boobs and create my own lingerie. Very unattractive because they don't look sexy at all. Hot if they're on a hot person. Oh my bad sorry bad grammar in my question. Crying face. Smiley face. Why? Granny panties are fine. Make ilfs great again. It depends on the color, size, style etc. Cause some women might look super hot wearing it and some might be a turn off. Are you still wearing the face mask and why why not? I wear it cause I'm ugly. No. Nobody does it here anymore. Yes, because I'm one, big, underlying condition. Yes, because I am in a hospital. Yes, I rob banks. At work, when required it makes sense to. Only hospital or dentist or clinic. Super self-conscious of my teeth. Yes, cause I'm Dr. Doom. Partially depends on the situation when it's very crowded etc. I use a mask, but for daily tasks like groceries I don't use one, cause I try to go at times where it's not that crowded. I do when I'm sick. I do. I just like keeping it because it weirdly enough helps with my self-image and I don't have to mask my autism as much when I'm in public. 1010 will keep wearing masks even after the pandemic. I worked from home beforehand. I never wore one anyway. Yeah because it bothers people. Dear Redditors, what is the worst song to hear on 24 hours loop? Santa Baby, Baby Shark, Baby Shark, Wham's Christmas Song, Baby Shark or Easy Street, Achy Breaky Heart, Hear No Evil Monkey. Baby sharks. It's a small world after all. Easy street. That means Negan has your ass. You suffer by napalm death. I love you Barney. Fergie's rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Easy street by the collapsible hearts. The song that never ends. Darude Sandstorm. Baby shark mom problems. That annoying ass dance monkey song. Seasons of love from Rent. Imagine listening to 525,600 minutes over and other again. Graduation Friends Forever by Vitamin C. No, all by the Descendants. Shake it off. How bizarre. Worst song ever. That fucking Frozen song I'm not saying which one. Number 9 by the Beatles. How accurate is the stereotype that mother-in-laws are truly terrible humans? I've seen horror stories on Reddit about them but I definitely hit the jackpot with my mill. She's one of the loveliest people I know. To know the stats but are just normal as fun to browse. That is inaccurate anyone can be a mother-in-law, both good and bad people. They are people. Some people you are going to like and some you aren't. Some are pleasant. Unfortunately mine is not one of them. I recently came to the depressing realization that mine will likely outlive me. My ex mill was awful. Did everything but wipe her 40 years o's ass. I am a great mother-in-law. I have two daughters. All I asked was that they love them like I do and to be great dads. So far so good. Oh. It's just a little difficult to fuck his brains out and then deal with his mother who thinks she knows him so well. How do you deal with loneliness? Explore hobbies are reddit for grown-ups are meet people are make new friends cheer are text friends are pen pals are chat. Buying two dirty hookers. Take out. Movies and video games. World for 34 years so far. Do the deed or simply don't. Glory hole. Very very badly. By starting your own meth empire. Acceptance. Play any random ass play trop of a game and listen to it while doing other stuff. Distract myself with escapist fantasy. These days it's mostly novels. By joining some kind of club or charity thing so you can have social interaction. Losing yourself in video games won't help. I have a huge 5 feet there which I was given a few years ago for context I'm 15 and autistic, so me getting teddies for presents it's common. That bitch is the only thing that can get me to sleep, I have to be cuddling it. I do things to distract myself. In the end, I'm pretty bad at it. How do you entertain your 1-2 year old? You don't direct the play. You make sure the child does things safely. 
but you provide opportunities for the child to experience more things, in different contexts. Allow them to learn by playing. Attend to them, but not direct the play. Also interacting with other children their age is vital up through 4 years old, and allowing them to play together to learn how to get along. Play hide and I won't seek. Bright lights and shiny things. My daughter loves when she lays on my legs and I lift her up and down. Also, Blippi, I'd wear white socks and move my feet. My daughter would talk to them like they were puppets. She'd ask a question and I'd move my foot. Somehow we made it work. She could figure out what my feet were saying. I also made her a sock puppet named Sock Dude. Box package how mentally healthy are you on a scale or 0 10 in around a patrick bateman good enough to keep going without seeking help bad enough that i ask myself this question fairly regularly 5 7 with rice like a 9 10 am quite happy most of the time no significant unexplainable mood swings eager to start most days excited to meet new people no dependency issues or neuroses that i can tell relationships in a good place I'm a bit easily distracted though and can struggle to focus sometimes. 5-10. Normally a 7, but I've gone as low as 3 before. Less than I was 2 weeks ago. But also less than I'll be in 2 weeks. I'm experiencing a downturn right now but I think I'll bounce back. Not very. Is there a scale or you want me to just use descriptives? Just cause I don't how well it would work using straight fucked as a unit of measurement. 5. If almost everyone is criticizing them then who even is watching Kardashians? The one dead guy's wife. Almost everyone isn't criticizing them but I wager a lot of people criticizing watch them. I imagine it's a world of billions and you have ex of people who bitch at their existence sex who love them for whatever reason and ex like me aren't really exposed to them who really couldn't care less either way. The people criticizing them obviously, gotta get material to laugh at it. You know who? A hundred thousand folks who still have cable. I've wondered that from day one. Who the fuck even watches that show? If McCarthy's ghost had a list of people who did, that would be worthy of a House on american Activities Committee hearing. I mean, some of the same people criticizing them also watch them. Also it's not like the two groups of people in the world are people who vocally don't like the Kardashians and basically nobody else. If the moon became habitable in the near future and you had an offer to get in on the business market early, what kind of business would you start? Probably the same shit I do now IT. It's going to take some serious support staff on site to keep a colony online. Trips back to Earth. It harvests the water created by the hydrogen protons from the sun that binds with the oxygen trapped in the moon's regolith. It's the only way to create water in situ on the moon. And it's free. Strip club. I'd call it Moon Poon. Oxygen farm. It would start a Tesla business cause Elon Musk is gonna buy a part of the moon somehow. Pub. Anti-anti-gravity issues. Gotta keep people grounded man. Photography while the moon was still cool farming while the moon was still roomy and cashier when the moon got safe ways low gravity physical therapy retreat if the person you're dating says they don't want to label their sexuality what is your response hmm i need to tell you that i'm monogamous that's important to me apart from that we can make it work all right the real question you need to ask yourself is what do i want once you have that answer you can speak to them honestly and say this is what i am looking for if that's not you then this isn't going to work Know yourself and what you want, make a decision and tell them straight out. You won't be happy otherwise. I mean, if I'm dating them I already know their sexuality is at least compatible with me, so I don't really care. I only get a little frustrated when someone who I'm not dating but I'm interested in says something like that because then I'm just sitting there like can I hit on you or not lol as long as they're also monogamous, I don't care if they don't want to label themselves as gay by pan or whatever. Introverts of Reddit, how did you meet your so? Met her at a party. She was looking at the host's movie collection and I just walked up and asked if she saw anything she liked. We talked about her favorite movies and soundtracks growing up and before she went home I got her number. Called her the next day. Church, in high school. I noticed her the moment she walked in. Afterwards, there was no way I was approaching her. Thankfully, she knew some of my friends and came over. We met, she claimed me, and we've been together for 28 years, married for almost 24. I met her in high school school. First time for both of us, just clung to her. She is awesome. Bumble we met up for our first date, and we clicked so well that we sat and talked for 4 hours. 2 years later, we're still together and are planning to move in next year. Life is good. If you could bring back one thing from the 90s, what would it be? Saturday morning cartoons. Pre 9-11 optimism. Cost of living. My youth. Being excited to see a new movie. Those little round bath beads with the oil in them. Lack of social media. I was born in 97 so take this for what you will. I would bring back the creative spirit of the 90s. 
designs, art, and media across all mediums was wacky and bright. Everything from television shows Think Nickelodeon, to Plastic Cups Blue Jazz, to logo design, and beyond. I miss the playful exploration. Everything today feels too sterile and corporate. Minimalism sucks. If you were in medieval times what would you be? Dead. Burned at the stake. Fucked with horrible eyesight. A wizard. I wouldn't have even survived the birth, so dead. I'd be me but medieval. A viking. Probably just a seamstress or whatever women were allowed to do. That's if I haven't died at childbirth yet. Executioner. Chopping off heads sounds a fun and easy way to make a living. A witch there's a theory that witches were actually just autistic people. Riddled with syphilis. World's oldest profession or a sheep farmer. A turtle. 99 of people were dirt farming serfs. 0.9 were other jobs and 0.1 were the nobles who owned things. Still if we are picking I will take noble thank you. Considering the rampant violence around and difficulties regarding traveling I will stuck at a monastery by multiplying books by handwriting. A patron, eating the bad seasoned chicken they serve while watching the show. Probably dead. A blacksmith. In 2022, is it even possible to be civil when discussing politics or religion? Yes. Learn to listen. It's very possible. But not on Reddit. Absolutely. One of the main problems is the people find their identities and their political tribe where the political identity was never intended to be your personal identity. It breeds zealotry. With rational people, yeah. I've had countless good conversations about such things. But America has 160 million people who have brain damage thanks to lead exposure and we still haven't banned leaded gasoline entirely or gotten rid of all the lead water pipes. So rational people aren't as common as they maybe could have been. Better question why is civility fetishized so much? If you say that if someone is 